Today is May the 24th, 2020. A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans from the New American Bible, Chapter 6 of Romans, Justification and the Christian Life, Death to Sin, Life in God. And we're looking at a picture that represents St. Paul shipwreck. We read about that in Acts 27, 43 through 44. But the centurion commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. So it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. So that's what I'm showing pictured here as I read to you uh, Romans chapter 6. Starting with verse 1 on death to sin and life in God. What then are we to say? Let us continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Are you not aware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Through baptism into his death, we were buried with him so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. If we have been united with him through likeness to his death, so shall we be through a like resurrection. This we know. Our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might be slaves to sin no longer. A man who is dead has been freed from sin. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we are also to live with him. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no more power over him. His death was death to sin. Once for all. His life is life for God. In the same way, you must consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. Do not therefore let sin rule your mortal body and make you obey its lusts. No more shall you offer the members of your body to sin as weapons for evil. Rather, offer yourselves to God as men who have come back from the dead to life and your bodies to God as weapons for justice. Sin will no longer have power over you. You are now under grace, not under the law. What does all this lead to? Just because we are not under the law, but under grace, are we free to sin? By no means. You must realize that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are the slaves of the one you obey, whether yours is the slavery of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to justice. Thanks be to God. Though once you were slaves of sin, you sincerely obeyed that rule of teaching which was imparted to you. Freed from your sin, you became slaves of justice. I use the following example from human affairs because of your weak human nature. Just as formerly you enslaved your bodies to impurity and licentiousness for their degradation, Make them now the servants of justice for their sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you had freedom from justice. What benefit did you then enjoy? Things you are now ashamed of, all of them tending toward death. But now that you are freed from sin and have become slaves of God, your benefit is sanctification as you tend toward eternal life. The wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I memorize that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The notes on chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. Paul denies that sin calls forth the grace of God. It is rather the divine generosity that is the source of the gift of grace. Grace is bestowed at baptism and produces a true renewal. It makes the baptized person capable of responding effectively to the dictates of his conscience concerning faith and life. This renewal is the prelude to the Christian's bodily resurrection and admission to eternal life. Uh, the notes on chapter 6, 12 through 19. While the Christian remains in this mortal life, the power of sin in him is not fully overcome. His personal effort under the influence of grace is required to surmount the weakness remaining in him. Again, his personal effort under the influence of grace is required to surmount the weakness remaining in him. Chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. The two ways of life, intrinsically opposed, produce opposite results. False freedom from justice brings enslavement by sin and the punishment of death. Freedom from sin begets sanctification and eternal life in Christ. Again, freedom from sin begets sanctification and eternal life in Christ Jesus. Uh, that concludes the reading on Romans chapter 6 and its notes. Thanks be to God.